Okay, now that we've gotten familiar with uh, both MIDI and uh, WAV files in Ableton, both in session and arrangement view, um, I'm going to show you a little bit more about, uh, as far as remixes, remixes are concerned, uh, with warping, um, and also just like some some general problems that may arise, um, and just a whole mess of stuff. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a uh, a set that I've been uh, working on previous set here and I'll let this load up and as you can see in my previous tutorial I was talking to about talking to you about uh, the shaded um, waves um, as you can see they're still loading so we'll just uh, let that do its thing um, I have a couple tracks here um, and this is actually a mashup of uh, a song by tonight only called Where the Party's At and uh, Lady Gaga uh, Bad Romance I believe so um, we'll just uh, let everything load now uh, before we begin um, I purposefully did this as you can see this one part of the Lady Gaga acapella that I have in this project is missing as you can see it says sample offline um, if you don't have everything in the same folder if you don't have any that you know if you're um, not very organized like me. Um, this will kind of happen to you a lot. Um, if you're working with a bunch of different files in a bunch of different locations, Ableton may get a little confused as to where uh, a piece of your project is. Um, and as you can see in the bottom here, the very bottom, uh, the info view, uh, you'll see it says media files are missing. Please click here to learn more. So if you click, uh, actually, if you click here on that uh, that orange box, this window will come up and it says missing media files. Um, one of the reference files are missing. So it's trying, it's trying to find it, but it can't find it because um, it's not in the specified folder that I have set here. Um, and in this pane, you can tell Ableton where to look for, uh, for all your files. Um, and this is important uh, if, this, uh, if this happens to you. Um, and this window will come up and it'll ask you, you know, where, where do you want Ableton to look for the, the files. On to warping, um, the Lady Gaga acapella, um, obviously was not completely perfect with, uh, where the party's at here. In fact, I'll, let me see if I can, uh, turn off the warping for one of these, uh, these windows and we'll just let it play here. Zoom in here. You can tell Lady Gaga is, you know, she's singing real, she's slower than the other one, so, um, in fact, it sounds pretty bad, so, I'm just gonna stop it for now. So what we can do in this instance is we can zoom in on this, uh, this track and we can do it ourselves. And, uh, the way that we can do that is, you can see on the far left here, you'll see this little yellow box, um, you know, just like pretty much everything else in Ableton is some form of a yellow box. Um, you'll see that it's a, it's a warp marker, basically, and this is telling Ableton uh, where to warp. Um, it's just like a little info piece, you know, it's a marker uh, telling Ableton what to do at that specified point. So um, we can add and subtract these markers to this selected clip in order to uh, make uh, Lady Gaga time up with the, uh, the other song. As you can see here, I'm in the editor for this piece of... Uh, Bad Romance, and you can tell that when I go into this gray box, uh, right uh, where the this marker is, you can see that there's gray markers showing up at all these uh, key points in the in the wave. Um, and uh, what you can do is, if you double click, you'll see that it has made a new marker at this specified point. Um, and what you can do is, your bracket cursor will show up again, and um, you can click and drag these warp markers. And you can see that when I move it to the left, it alters the segment of the track. Let's just do it real far to the left here and see how it sounds. <laughs> and as you can tell, Lady Gaga is singing incredibly fast now. So what we're going to do is we're going to move this back. And like I said, it's mostly guess and check. Um, you know, you can try and line up uh, if we zoom the arrangement view here. You see with the vertical bars. Um, you can try your best to line up the wave with the bars 
to make sure it's on beat. And as you can tell, when I move the marker to the left in the editor, the wave itself moves in the arrangement view as well, which is very helpful because it allows you to, uh, you know, to see what you're doing, basically. And that sounds a little bit better. A little bit better. You can keep adding more markers as you go along. If one part is fine and the other part is too fast or too slow, you can add another marker to uh, to leave that good part alone and uh, to continue working. Now, it's still too fast. So I'll slow it down a little bit. Oh, wrong way. Wrong way, Ron. That's a little bit better. Oops. Hey, that sounded pretty good. One more thing we'll do is uh, we'll take a look at effects. Uh, I almost forgot about the effects. I can't believe I almost forgot about Ableton's effects. Um, what we can do is if we take this track, we highlight it, make sure that it's in yellow. If we come over to uh, to our to our library here. Actually, we'll go to Live Devices here, and you'll see these three folders here. That's uh, MIDI Effects, Instruments, Audio Effects. We're going to go to Audio Effects because we're not working with MIDI right now. We're working with WAV format, so we'll go to Audio Effects. As you can see, if you open up that folder, there's a whole bunch of um, audio effects at your disposal that you can add to your songs. Um, so just as a quick example, I'll be using this, uh, this part of uh, Bad Romance. We'll make sure it lines up. And that's close enough. We'll make sure it's working. Oh. We're running uh, to add effects uh, to a track. We specify what track we want to add effects to, and uh, we just all right. So we got her doing her thing there, and um, just as an example, uh, try and make something that's really obvious. Um, how about a flanger? Uh, we'll go and you see, you even have different options for flangers, uh, and try not to find one that's too annoying. Maybe the swirling one, you can double click and it'll add the swirling. As you can see, I have some other effects already um, already on here. Um, let's see. I'm just double clicking those to kind of hide them and get them out of the way here. So I added the swirling uh, flanger to this one section of Bad Romance here. So let's just have a listen. <laughs> Tell. Getting a little weird. So, this is just an example of, you know, and you can actually turn the flanger on and off with this little power button in the window. It's kind of demented. If you just make her be quiet for a little bit. Um, so we also have, I mean, and th that's just one example of the effects that you can do. Um, so there you have it. Just uh, some extra, some ideas for you um, that you can add to your remixes, your mashups, whatever you're working on. Um, and we'll uh, continue to the next tutorial.